Welcome to our first episode on the Learn Live Azure Hybrid Cloud Study Hall on Learn TV. Uh, welcome everyone who tuned in uh, this morning, depending on where you are, maybe already in the evening or uh, in the middle of the night. Um, my name is Thomas Maurer. Uh, I work as a senior program manager for Azure Hybrid at Microsoft, and I'm joined by Lisa Clark. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Tom. I'm so excited to be here. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, let us know where you're joining from. Um, my name is Lisa Clark, and I work at Dell Technologies. Um, I, I'm also a Microsoft um, MVP. Um, and at Dell, I'm focused on all things uh, Microsoft Hybrid Cloud, uh, specifically the Azure Stack um portfolio of products and increasingly more and more azure arc so i'm super excited to be here and um, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about <laughs> no that's awesome and i'm super happy to have you here we definitely have the right person here uh to talk about uh today's topic which is going to be uh, our first learn module of this series and it's basically an introduction into azure stack and especially as you just mentioned in the azure stack portfolio uh and you can obviously follow us uh, and do this learn module by yourself. So if you're new to Microsoft Learn, no worries. I will explain this uh, to you a little in just a bit. But uh, if you're familiar already, we have a QR code here. We also have a link here, which you can go. And this will take you to the learn module we will go through uh, today. So please uh, join us here so you can have an interactive experience. But you can obviously also uh, watch uh, this episode here um, with us and we will basically go through these topics and you can also do it later at your own time. Uh, so just uh, be happy about that. So what are we going to talk about in this specific learn module today? What are the objectives, Lisa? Yep. So as I mentioned in my introduction, the Azure Stack family is in fact a portfolio of products. So we're going to learn about each of the products within the portfolio and be able to describe those. We're also going to look at describing the basic architecture of each of the products um, with a focus on the primary use cases for each of the products um, and talk about some of the core capabilities. So for each of the products, as you see there, Azure Stack Hub, the OG, <laughs> Azure Stack Edge and Azure Stack HCI, we're going to basically be able to describe the basic architecture, the core capabilities, and focus quite a bit on the use cases because it is a portfolio of products. Um, and so sometimes you know, it can get a little bit confusing when I use uh, which solution uh, or what combinations I use. So we're going to spend some time on that for each of the products. Okay, no, that is, that is awesome. And again, if you're not familiar with Azure Stack right now, don't worry, that is why we are here and that is why we're doing this learn module today. Also, if you have questions and comments um, and you just want to say hi, feel free to use the comment functions. Uh, we have our producer, Laura, in the background who will help us find the, find you uh, and then obviously answer your question uh, if, we, if we have enough time. So with that, I want to directly move to Microsoft Learn. And for that, we have already put up um, our Learn module for today. Uh, and so... I would just want to take a brief moment to actually explain what Microsoft Learn is. And so Microsoft Learn really is a, our free learning platform for everyone. It's not just about Azure hybrid technologies, by the way. It's also for other Azure and non-Azure technologies like Microsoft 365 uh, and so on. Also some open source technologies as well. So if you're interested in learning about different uh, products and services and even methodologies as well, um, you can actually go uh, and check that out. So we have the concept of these different learning paths, right? And so we have one which we're going to start with today on the Azure Stack HCI, found, what we call the Azure Stack HCI Foundations. Uh, but we also have one on Azure Arc, which we will have later today in the day um, uh, available as well. And we will mix these up. And by the way, those sessions are recorded. So even if you can not join all of them live, um, feel free to also check out the recordings. Obviously, with the live experience, you can also get your questions uh, answered. And so 
each learning path have di has different modules. And so we are here in the first module of this series, uh, Introduction into Azure Stack. And you can see here, we went through the learning objectives. There are also some prerequisites. Um, I will not focus too much on too strongly on the prerequisites. It's really, uh, if you're not, you don't need to be an expert on these topics, but you should have heard uh, probably these words before. Uh, and that's good. And then Thank on the you. bottom. Words before is enough because pre the prerequisites are great. Um, I love I love Microsoft Learn. It's a, an amazing tool um, to learn about, um, especially for beginners, just learning about the cloud basics. I, I love it. Um, but yeah, on the prerequisites, they are just a guide. Um, you do not need to like have sort of hands-on experience with any of these to work your way through the modules and to gain um, gain knowledge from the modules. So um, I can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So each of these modules then has like what we call units. And basically, there's just different sections in this module. And again, as Lisa explained, uh, these are the ones we're going through today. And you can also obviously go on your own pace as well. Um, we will go through these and we will talk about the different uh, services and products and the, the Azure Stack portfolio. Uh, we will also, by the way, have knowledge checks. So in this case, we have multiple knowledge checks in that module, meaning we have a couple of questions after a topic uh, which we will go through uh, and basically uh, try to answer that with you. So you will be able to actually also answer the questions live, do a poll, um, and then we can see what people think is the right answer. And then we obviously will tell you what the right answer is as well. So with that, I think, Lisa, we should really go uh, and start with the introduction um, yes. of this module. Yes, let's get started um, and encourage everyone to, to follow along. Uh, with us, um, that would be great. We're here for, for a while to walk through it with you. So definitely um, join along with us and especially get involved with the knowledge checks as well. Yeah, absolutely. So for the introduction part, obviously, uh, there must be a reason why we have our Azure Stack portfolio and why you do hybrid, right? And maybe you can explain a little bit. I mean, you're working with a lot of customers um, uh, on this. And you obviously did a lot of projects and you know um, a lot on that topic. What are the reasons why a customer actually would do hybrid or why would why would they actually care about that topic? Yes, yeah, so uh, it's a very interesting topic. I think for, for many years, there's been a lot of various reasons uh, thrown about as to why you might not use the cloud. Um, I think we've come a long way since then, and we've realized that actually there are perfect scenarios and use cases where you would use or you know have your workloads living within Azure. But then, of course, there are um, some workloads and some use cases where that just doesn't work. Um, and what I love about Microsoft and Azure is that they, you know, they don't want those workloads left out. <laughs> they want them to be able to benefit from um, all of the great technology that you get within Azure. Um, so some of the um, some of the the scenarios um, that I see within my role at Dell is I, I think you know data uh, regulations and privacy are a massive one. So anything in sort of healthcare or public sector, uh, we see um, the need to keep the data on on premises, and sometimes that is a real need, and sometimes it's because you know regulatory frameworks etc. have maybe just not evolved at the pace at which technology has evolved. So, so yeah, sometimes they are very real and sometimes they are perceived, but there is definitely a need to keep data on premises. Um, and then, you know, we all know the, the latency and bandwidth use case is very, very real. Um, there's not so much we can do about that um, more often than not. And so sometimes for uh, latency intensive applications, we just need to keep them on prem and we need to keep them close to where they are being used. Um, one of the scenarios actually mentioned in here, and I love this, I love that Microsoft Learn um, follows a story. I think that's always great for learning. Um, and I know that there's a there's a sort of number of fictional companies that Microsoft Learn follows and they'll, they'll give you in a scenario. And that's what we can see in this introduction module, right? And one of the, the scenarios there is around virtual desktop infrastructure. And we're gonna come on to that. We'll talk about that. I think when we get to Azure Stack HCI, um, but the need to have that running on-prem um, and 
in closer proximity to its users. Um, so there's a lot of very real cases, uh, use cases and reasons as to why workloads need to run on premises, in a data center, at the edge, in a factory, etc. cetera. Um, and what I love about Azure is the fact that, you know, uh, they don't want any of these workloads to be to be left out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have anything else to add on to that, Thomas? No, that that's a great, absolutely great summary on on why you want to do that. And again, I see that a lot, obviously, and and we we also acknowledge that, right? I I just wanna I always highlight one thing, which Jason Sanders and he was the engineering lead for all the Azure services um, did during the Microsoft Ignite keynote in 2019 in Orlando when we still had in person events. <laughs> He basically said that we believe that hybrid is going to be an end state for our customers and not just an in-between state until everything is moved to the cloud, yeah. right? And I think that is where you draw a strong message. It's like that we actually like know that, hey, there are reasons and you, you pointed all these out, right? I, I just worked with a company who has, for example, factories all over the place or retail stores. Yep. And even though they have a good connection and they could run their applications in the cloud, they don't want to rely on that internet connection uh, to the cloud because what that means is if that connection stops working, the factory uh, would stand still or the retail store would not like work. Right? Yeah. Imagine if you can't want to go shopping and you can't because they have no internet anymore. Yeah. Um, that would be a disaster, right? Uh, like uh, for me at least. Um, and so it's important to also like have these edge locations involved, have that available. And again, you also mentioned things like regulatory compliance and so on, which is absolutely like, I see that a lot too. So with that, you also have a little bit of a overview to share how um, these things actually like our services, our hybrid services come together in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the sort of Azure, hybrid overview um so let me let us put your uh oh yes um, get the slides up that's okay don't worry perfect. um so yeah the the azure hybrid overview pitch is something that i have been doing um almost every week for a year <laughs> now in terms of pitching this to um <laughs> dell's customers dell's partners internal uh dell sales dell pre-sales basically anybody who wants to hear it i am there and i am talking about how azure is hybrid by design and so i wanted to share just a little bit about that here um because i think it really sets the scene for this this module today on azure stack but also the next module later today on azure arc um and so i thought we would just go ahead and kind of share a little bit about that so what I love, like I said previously about Microsoft, is that they understand the 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 real uh, the real uh, need for workloads to live outside an Azure data center, um, and they are in fact Azure hybrid, but they are hybrid by design, um, and I think this comes from the fact that Microsoft is a little bit different from other cloud providers, shall we say, in that um, Microsoft have heritage and experience in the on-premises world, right? So, you know, they they understand, like we do at Dell, um, the complexities of the on-premises world. Um, and so I think that is what's driven Azure to be hybrid by design. And how do they how do, they do this? Um, they do it via two mechanisms. So um, the Azure Stack portfolio, which is what we're going to talk about today, and then Azure Arc, which is going to be in the, the next um, session. Um, and so today we're going to look at the Azure Stack portfolio and that consists of three products. So we've got Azure Stack Hub, we've got Azure Stack Edge, and we've got the newest product in the portfolio, which is Azure Stack HCI. And we're going to dive deep into these today in terms of their use cases, uh, their similarities, but also their differences. And you'll see I've got a line there that leads to Azure Stack HCI, and we'll come on to that. And that's because Azure Arc is integrated into Azure Stack HCI. But then we've got Azure Arc. Um, and what is Azure Arc? Is the um, ability to extend Azure management and monitoring capabilities to workloads that live with outside Azure, and also the ability to consume Azure services on-prem. So Azure Arc uh, decouples um, Azure services and allows you to run them on-prem, which will be covered in depth in the, in the next episode. But what does that actually mean? Because it because they say Azure Azure Anywhere with Azure Arc, um, that could be 
in a workload running in your data center, as we spoke, it could be a workload running at the edge, um, but it could actually also be uh, a workload or you know a virtual machine running in another, another public cloud. And, and I love this. I love this approach from Microsoft and Azure. Um, they really are looking to ensure that any workload can benefit from Azure innovation and capability. And um, it doesn't need to be an Azure uh, a workload within the, the Microsoft data center, although sometimes that's still the best location, obviously, for workloads. But I absolutely just love this approach. I think it just shows that Microsoft and Azure really understand their customers and their, their requirements. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think you hit some some absolutely great points here. Obviously, we're going to talk about the Azure Stack portfolio for the next minutes anyway. But also with Azure Arc again, I see like like being able to connect infrastructure um, in terms of like servers, Kubernetes clusters, vSphere environments, Azure Stack, and all that to the Azure Control Plane and manage everything from top from Azure. That's a great benefit. And then on the other hand, and you also mentioned that, is like bringing Azure services to the places the customer need them, right? So we have, for example, like one example is I spoke to a customer very recently, um, and he said, basically, we love Azure SQL. Like we love that it's a service. I don't need to take care of updating. I can scale it. I can do all these great things with it. However, I, I have scenarios like locations where our internet connectivity is just not reliable enough. Or he has also one or two locations where data sovereignty kicks in, where they cannot, where we don't have an Azure region, for example, close by uh, in the mm -hmm. same country. Uh, and so he needs to still store them within that country. And so what we do is if a customer cannot use the Azure service in Azure, we bring the Azure service to the customer. And I think that that's pretty great. Absolutely. So let's talk about more about Azure Stack and let's switch back to the Learn module. So if we go here uh, back to my screen, if you are in the learn module and you're on the introduction page, we would now go to the next unit and actually explain what Azure Stack is. Um, and so really, what is Azure Stack? And I think if you are familiar, like for those who are familiar with Azure Stack in the past, Azure Stack was one product, right? Uh, but Lisa, that has, that has changed now. Yes, it has. So uh, when Azure Stack first, uh, came around, it was one product, and that was Azure Stack Hub, as I like to call it, the OG, the original product within the portfolio. Um, and it was a way to consume, again, um, Azure uh, services, IaaS and PaaS services on-prem. Um, and we'll come on to a little bit more detail about Azure Stack Hub. Um, next up was Azure Stack Edge. Um, and then, like I say, the, new, the newest product is um, Azure Stack HCI. So yeah, they're a family of products, infrastructure-based, um, which allow the extension of Azure to um, data centers and edge locations. Um, like I say, there's three of them in the family currently with Azure Stack HCI being the newest um, member to the family. Um, and they do have some similarities, but they also have some differences, right, Tom? Um, and do we want to talk a little bit about some of the characteristics that the products share? Yes, absolutely. So you're absolutely right. Uh, we have these, and obviously there's a reason why we have different products there because they have very specific uh, purposes. Yeah. But one thing, when we come to the similarities and uh, the characteristics, you can see here also in the Learn module itself, um, that they all are, these are all for on-premises and edge locations, right? Meaning you cannot, this is not a multi-cloud play in that sense. You cannot put an Azure stack at another cloud provider. Um, yeah. But you, for your on-prem locations where you need some sort of infrastructure, again, for different purposes, and we'll dive in into these uh, in just a bit, um, uh, we, will, we will definitely uh, uh, have that as a great solution. Um, they're obviously all closely integrated with Azure. And I think I would even say they are part of Azure. It's not running in the Azure data center, but they're actually part of Azure. They are delivered as an Azure service. So when you look at things like billing, for example, that is done through Azure, right? So for example, for all of these services, um, they're like usually deployed as a service as well. So you have some, some similarities there as well. And I think also they can benefit, benefit very much from from Azure services, as you pointed out before, Azure services really, and I like that term of saying, 
hey, Azure really helps to also make your on-premises environment better, right? Yeah. And I think that is that is one thing. Uh, and they also help like very much to modernize your current infrastructure, right? If you currently have your virtualization environment uh, and you're actually doing that, that's all great. But with moving to a cloud approach, um, you can take advantage really of some, some new innovation we are driving with Azure uh, and bring, bring that to the on-prem premises world as well. Um, they all come, as I already mentioned, I already mentioned billing, but they come all on a pay-per-use uh, basis model. There are also different options. If you don't like that, there are options for certain products as Azure Stack Hub to have a different way there. Um, but um, basically what our customers really like is that pay-per-use model to actually just pay for what they use, even if it's on-prem. Uh, so, so that's fantastic. And then again, as I mentioned, those are really purpose-built solutions. So we have Azure Stack Edge, which has a very specific purpose when it comes to, for example, machine learning and AI at the edge. We have Azure Stack Hub, which is a great solution, especially if you are in a, in a disconnected environment and you want to take care aware, um, take benefit of the Azure control plane, the resource manager, and no worries for all everyone watching here. We we'll go into that a little bit deeper. And then Azure Stack HCI, which allows you to do a couple of awesome things from very small deployments, for example, uh, in your retail stores or branch offices, but then also very powerful deployments, for example, for your SQL Server uh, uh, environment in your data center. And Lisa, you also mentioned, obviously, Arc before. Uh, yeah. I often get the question, uh, and I know you answered that a little bit before, but you, I often get the question, so, Thomas, what do I need? Do I need Azure Stack or do you need Azure Arc? Uh, or yeah. is Azure Arc replacing Azure Stack? Or yeah. what is the deal with that? Yeah, um, and I think if we just think back to my uh, slide, and now I understand, Thomas, why you suggested we put the slide at the, this point of the of the discussion. I think the way to think about it is is the Azure Stack portfolio of products is infrastructure uh, products from Microsoft, right, and their partners. So very quickly, just to, to clarify, Azure Stack HCI and Azure Stack Hub, you would need to get from your chosen OEM. I remember where I work, but you could, you might have a, you might have a different chosen OEM, right? So you would get Azure Stack HCI or Azure Stack Hub from them. Um, and, but you actually consume Azure Stack HCI and we'll come on to this from Microsoft, right? But all three of those are infrastructure. And I would say that if you are all in on, um, Azure, you are familiar with Hyper-V, you, you know, use all the, the tools, um, that you've been used to with Hyper-V and Windows Admin Center, et cetera, then maybe going with an Azure Stack um, product would be for you. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that Azure Arc is actually inbuilt into Azure Stack HCI, so it just enhances it even further, giving it that really deep integration with Azure. Whereas Azure Stack, Azure Arc, right, is there's no infrastructure kind of that comes with it. You, you, ex you extend Azure Arc um, and be an Azure Arc agent to infrastructure in which you are already running on. Um, so that might be something entirely different from Hyper-V. Um, I'm not sure, we should have checked at the beginning what I can say and what I can't say. But for instance, it could be it could be another uh, hypervisor provider, right? Like VMware. Um, you could have some VMware um, infrastructure running in your data center, but you want to take advantage of some Azure capabilities and some Azure services, then Azure Arc is for you. So there are lots of different options here. Uh, very in keeping with Microsoft, they like to provide lots of options, which is great, but it can sometimes get confusing. And I think that's what's going to be really beneficial about this episode and the next episode is explaining a little bit more about um, how they complement each other. Because I think back to your question, Tom, they don't replace they don't replace each other; they complement each other. And then it really depends on your requirements, which route you go down, or if you have a mix of both. That is true, absolutely. I also quickly want to take, by the way, some time for the people who are uh, commenting on the different streams on YouTube, Learn TV, Twitter, Twitch, and so on. Um, so it's great to see. We have, by the way, viewers right now from Switzerland with Nuno. We have people from Australia joining in. Uh, we have George is here. I can see that. Patrick from the Netherlands. Uh, we have Scott from Scotland. Oh, that's 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 good. I did not make this up. That's true. Um, and then we also have people from South Africa and India with uh, CPA. So and 
Yutoyirimoi. I hope I pronounced, I'm sure I did not pronounce it correctly. And I apologize for that. I'm sorry. But uh, that's awesome. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, so with your explanation now, that absolutely is helpful. So we have a knowledge check. I promised you that we actually go uh, into this uh, knowledge check and actually see and, and go through that. So with that, we want to include you uh, in that. And so we go to the first question and we want to give you some time as well uh, to actually go and answer that question um, with us. So again, you can uh, scan the QR code and answer it or you go to aka.ms slash polls and you can actually fill that out uh, and actually vote for what you think is the right answer. The question is, which of the following feature is common across the free Azure Stack products? So A, it's purpose-built, pre-configured and Microsoft certified and validated hardware. B, it has built-in support for disaster recovery. Or C, all of these support up for up to 16 nodes. So this is absolutely interesting question and we can obviously go into uh, the different details of this answer, Lisa. Um, there's definitely uh, some stuff which is true for some of the products yeah. Um, but not for all of them. So it's very, we need to be very careful here. It's like really common across all the products. Yeah. So let's, let's speak maybe about the, the solution C. Uh, I know that like Azure Stack HCI, for example, supports an, uh, up to 16 nodes. But if you look at the others, uh, Azure Stack Hub and Azure Stack Edge, they are different, right? Yes. Or, well, uh, maybe not, but. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's Azure Stack Edge that would be the 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 one that doesn't fit this number C. Yep. Um, and we'll come on to why that is when we cover Azure Stack Edge. Uh, not to give any, away any spoilers, <laughs> but it's uh, yeah. I think whereas Hub Hub and HCI uh, yep. support for up to sixteen nodes, and then more in a cluster set. How many in a cluster set, Tom? How many in a cluster? That's a uh, that's an interesting. <laughs> That's an interesting. Question. How many cluster sets can you have? I don't. Know. <laughs> I think it's so. I I want to say for HCI, it's up to sixteen nodes in a cluster and up to sixty four in a cluster set. Okay. I okay. think. So that is, by the way, that's interesting. So that is something we get a lot. Is like questions: How, like, what is the biggest size of a cluster? Right. Mm -hmm. and the cluster can, like, as you go, as we as you mentioned, for Hub and HCI, we can go up to sixteen nodes. Yeah. Uh, but then the customer saying, well, but. We need bigger environments. And we say, yes, mm -hmm. of course. You can have multiple clusters and you put them in a cluster set for easier management uh, and management, and put these together. So that's definitely a good thing. And then obviously another one we have is built-in support for disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. So I know for a fact here that Hub and HCI support disaster recovery uh, or like high availability in that sense, if you will, yes. again, when you have multiple nodes. But again, I would say, and that's my opinion, Edge doesn't really, like the Edge appliance, and we're going to talk, as you mentioned, more about that. Yeah. I don't think really that that's an option right now there um, that you, you can do. It's also not designed to do that, like the use case no. is not, not doing that. Yeah. So this leaves us basically with A. Yes. Uh, a purpose-built, pre-configured, and Microsoft certified and validated uh, hardware solution. And I think that is absolutely true across uh, all these different Azure Stack services. So let's see if we are right here. <laughs> and we can also see, by the way, there's a lot of votes here uh, okay. for answer A. That is good. And we see a couple of votes also on the other topics because they're not. Don't get like. Don't think you're wrong now. Um, it's it's that bad. It's it's not. Sometimes they're not easy questions. Again, like two out of three usually support these. So it's. Uh, yeah. Um, and if you're not familiar with Edge, then which you will be later on. Um, then yeah. you can do that. So it's A, we were right, absolutely. So let's go to the next one. Um, yes. This one is a great one. Um, what is the common pricing model uh, supported by the Azure Stack products? And we have A, reserved instances, which is, by mm -hmm. the way, a great way to save money in Azure. Mm -hmm. uh, we have B, spot pricing, which is also mm -hmm. an interesting piece which you can do in Azure. And then we have C, pay as you use. I think that is like a common cloud um, uh, billing model, obviously. You would uh, expect that one, wouldn't you? Sorry? 
you would expect pay as you use. That's like the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that is that is to come back, and we will have a look if, if that's the true uh, uh, answer. Um, pay as you use really um, is, is is as I mentioned for in the cloud a real thing, right? It's most of the time you use pay as you use, and since Azure Stack really is part of Azure, they are pay as you use. And so <laughs> let's see if I was right. And again, uh, people uh, are voting, so there are a lot of votes again, as I can see on answer. Um, uh, and to so see, um, and I will see if if they're if we are all correct. Yes, so it is and to see it's pay per use. Um, reserved instances and spot pricing are really cool things if you are running, for example, uh, virtual machines in Azure uh, or even other Azure services, and you commit, for example, like in the reserved instance case, you commit to using that, like let's say virtual machine or service for the next year or three years. And then we get you a discount because you committed to use it, using it, right? So that is that is definitely some interesting stuff there. So with that, let's switch back to the learn module. And again, in my case, I will. We already checked the answers. So let's go to Azure Stack Hub, Lisa. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know you do a lot of work on Azure Stack Hub, like in the very <laughs> early days as well. You were very early involved um, around Azure Stack Hub. Yeah. So. I I won't lie, Azure Stack Hub has a, a special place in my heart. Um, it was learning about Azure Stack Hub um, just before its launch um, that got me super excited and involved in all things Azure and in all things Azure hybrid, because I think when Azure Stack Hub was launched, it was really quite ahead of its time. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about what Azure Stack Hub is. And so the way that I explain Azure Stack Hub is it is effectively a mini Azure region within your data center. So it um, runs on infrastructure, which is co-engineered by Microsoft and um, an OEM. In my case, that would be Dell Technologies. Um, and so the, the co-engineer an appliance that appliance is delivered as what we like to call a black box um, in that you don't really get to tinker around with the nuts and bolts and the, the, the infrastructure inside. It's really not a virtualization platform. It really is an appliance um, and it runs an Azure region within your data center. Now, what do I mean when I say that? Um, it means that the you run the Azure portal, the Azure marketplace. Um, you run a version of um, the Azure Resource Manager. Really, everything that Azure is is packaged up into Hub and allows you to run that on premises in your data center or at the edge. It starts at four nodes, so um, you know four nodes to to begin with. But when you think about that engineering uh, accomplishment, that's quite impressive because you'll have literally Azure is <laughs> starting in four nodes. And um, that says that said it, it only has a a subset of IaaS and PaaS services, um, the most popular popular ones. Um, and also a, a key thing to keep in mind with Hub is if you are going to run an Azure Stack Hub, you really do need to be familiar with the um, sort of cloud operator uh, skills um, necessary to do that. And what do I mean by that? Um, you will be responsible for managing the Azure marketplace. You will be responsible for managing the offers and the plans and the capacity. Basically, everything that Microsoft do for Azure behind the scene, you will be responsible for. But it's really, really cool. Um, it's for very specific use cases. So very much the use cases where connectivity is an issue or data regulatory um, restraints apply. Um, and so we see a lot of it in the defense industry and also um, in industries where they have to run in kind of hostile environments and they really cannot be connected to the internet because with Azure Stack Hub, and it's the only product here, you can be entirely air gapped, entirely disconnected from both the internet and from Azure. So it's a really, really cool product. Um, in case you didn't tell, I, I kind of love it. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how I would high level describe Azure Stack Hub. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, 
I know you're right. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to mess with that. Um, so, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's an integrated system, right? You get it as an appliance solution, if you will. Uh, and you have, obviously, the hardware packaged up uh, nicely by the vendor um, to support this. And then you get this um, possibility to run, basically, really Azure in a disconnected environment, right? But, again, I also want to manage expectations here. There's obviously some IaaS and some PaaS running on this. but um, you can imagine, you mentioned the engineering effort, which went from like, hey, going from this super large Azure data center where we have thousands of servers to a four node version uh, is pretty big. So obviously there are some some limitations with that as well. Um, and I always need to tell customers to like, hey, don't expect like everything you get in Azure, you get in Azure Stack Hub, right? It's really um, uh, for certain services, you need to check out if that, if that really is a good fit for you. But again, then it provides you with a disconnected portal. It provides you with um, our Azure resource manager. So you can use basically ARM templates, which you can use in Azure. You can use them uh, also in a disconnected environment. And I think that that is really, really powerful uh, as well. Um, so you mentioned a little bit uh, about the use cases. And I think that is interesting. Uh, again, we, we, we spoke about like, hey, that's going to be a disconnected scenario and, and scenarios yeah. where you don't have uh, connectivity or direct connectivity to Azure, but you still want to take advantage of this. And I absolutely agree. Uh, I love the Azure Stack Hub solution on this um, as well. But there are also some things we maybe need to talk about. What is like, and you mentioned already a couple of these, what Azure Stack Hub is not, right? Um, I think if you just want to replace your virtualization environment, uh, Azure Stack Hub is probably uh, not necessarily the, the right solution for you, right? There is definitely uh, with, for example, Azure Stack HCI, probably better solutions out there which, which you can help with that. Or if you want to customize things um, uh, really like on, on the different hardware pieces or you want to do some special settings and stuff like that, that's yeah. because it's de de delivered as an appliance or as an integrated system, that's not really possible. And that, that's also a good thing, right? It's like a yeah. good thing that people cannot tamper with the environment. And that is like yeah. some companies really want that. But like, if you yeah. want it, probably not the right choice. No, I think if you, and I've seen this, right? Especially in the early days. Um, and I've also seen this, I'll just say from some other vendors. Um, when you when you start to try and customize um, Azure Stack Hub, you're gonna run into problems. You, you probably you know, don't really understand its use case very well, and you will very quickly r run into problems. The reason that it is, um, co-engineered by Microsoft and OEMs, the reason that it's delivered as an appliance is because you really need um, the infrastructure to be consistent and predictable for lifecycle management and also for bringing Azure services to it. It's it's effectively what Microsoft do with their infrastructure in their data centers, right? Is they, they have to be quite prescriptive about what it, what it looks like and how it runs um, so that they know when they deploy new services to it, um, it's all going to work <laughs> nicely. Yeah. yeah. And you're, you're hitting an absolute good point because that's also one thing listed. It's obviously we, we this is packaged up in an integrated system and we make it easy to apply updates to it. But you're still the hardware is still in your data center. You're still yeah. responsible uh, for actually like someone needs to manage that hardware still, right? Yeah. It's different from what what you need to do. But if something breaks, it's not Mike the Microsoft person coming into your um, data center and pulling the the disk out and putting another one in. I know that vendors in some cases and some like managed service providers offer these things, but yeah. again, it's not like it's not managed directly by Microsoft. It's not something where Microsoft is actually going on you to your systems and, and does all of it. Um, that's also something customers in some cases don't want, right? They want to really yeah. have that disconnected scenario and you don't they don't want to have Microsoft being able to connect to your solution, right? And so, yeah. uh, and so that that is that is definitely a good case here. There's both infrastructure and software updates required, so they're definitely not eliminated. There's the Microsoft updates, and then there's also the hardware updates for your OEM. You need to make sure that they are carried out. You need to make sure those updates, those updates are happening, and like you say, you need to make sure that you um, are take responsible for that underlying. Um, that underlying hardware. And I think, you know, as as um, Azure Stack Hub has now been around for a while, we've got really clear on what it's not and what it is. And I'm seeing that in terms of the the use cases when someone comes and they're like, I think this is an Azure Stack Hub use cases. 
use case more often than not it is um and for those where it's maybe not the quite fit we obviously have another two products that we'll come on to um yeah. in a little bit absolutely i also got a question in the chat here um someone is asking can i say azure stack hub is a cloud extension now i would say well depending on obviously what you mean by by extension but i would say all of the azure stack products are cloud extensions, right? It's like all of them bring some sort of Azure into your uh, data center. And so for that, I would say, yes, you can say that, but you obviously, again, people can understand different things from what an extension is. Um, so you need to be clear there, okay, what it is and what it, what it not is. Yeah. So we talked about the use cases already, but yeah. we have a couple again, like also the learn module here, as you can see, highlights a couple of these use cases. Uh, latency and bandwidth sensitive workloads where you actually want to have like these services running on prem where where you probably cannot deal with it like completely disconnected environments or um, as you mentioned uh, compliance or regulatory restrictions uh, which are interesting as well so next up before we go on to the knowledge check because i have scrolled ahead and i want to make sure that we're giving everyone the chance to get the the questions right Will we just quickly mention what um, some of the the, the PaaS services that are available on Azure Stack Hub? <laughs> so, like we said at the the beginning, there is a subset of IaaS and PaaS services available on Hub, um, and it is a subset um, for reasons that we we've described. It it does start as little as four nodes. Um, but these include uh, virtual machines. So that is Azure virtual machines, by the way, which is pretty cool. Um, you've also got app service, web apps, um, API apps. You've got Azure Functions. You've got SQL, MySQL. Um, you've got Event Hubs, Key Vault, IoT Hubs, and a few others there as well. So service fabric clusters and Kubernetes clusters. So just to give you an idea of some of the past services that you can run on Hub, which may or may not be coming up in a question. <laughs> awesome. No, thank you for doing that. That's, that's definitely going to be helpful for our audience to answer this question. So let's go into the next knowledge check. And I'm going to share again, going back to, to the deck here. Um, so we have a question around which of the following platform as a service services so past services, does Azure Stack Hub support? So is it does does it support A, Key Vault, B, Cosmos DB, and C, Traffic Manager? So very important now, I hope you listened to Lisa in the last couple of minutes uh, because she actually went through it. And so there's definitely some interesting stuff here. And I think what we need to consider here, and I think that makes the answer at one point, if you, if you understand these services, um, and you understand the concept I mentioned with like going from these large Azure data center to these even four node systems, right? Four to 16 node systems. There's obviously a lot of work going on. And if I look at these services, um, I think C and B. So C is definitely like if you're familiar with traffic manager, it's really a global, a global service uh, on, on Azure, right? To actually have traffic distributed across different Azure regions. So that is pretty big already and obviously globally distributed. If I look at Cosmos DB, similar thing. Um, basically, when I, uh, it's also a service which is very, scales very well and also can be like replicating across different regions. And it's pretty, like, if you look at it, how it works, I would say if, I, if you're a little bit thinking how it works, uh, it's a pretty big service, right? So, uh, and then we have Key Vault. And for those who don't know what Key Vault is, it actually is a secure place where you can store your secrets and certificates uh, in a secure way. Uh, we have Azure Key Vault, obviously, in Azure. But is it also available on Azure Stack Hub? That's the question. So we've got some votes coming in, I can see, on the, the poll. And it's leaning heavily towards A, Tom. OK. Let's see. Um, again, you can still vote, but we will uh, already go go ahead and yep. let's see if they're right. And yes, it's correct. It's Azure Key Vault. Again, if you listen to Lisa, um, then you would have known that. Um, so make sure um, you're available to that. Now, does that mean, by the way, I always get this question, I cannot use this. Now, I cannot use Cosmos DB. It's obviously not running on Azure Stack Hub, right? 
but I can still build hybrid applications, meaning I can still take advantage of these services where some stuff is running on Azure Stack Hub and other stuff is running in Azure. And then I can use for the part everything in Azure, I can use Azure, uh, Cosmos DB, for example. So that's definitely something. So let's jump to the next uh, 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 question here, which is, mm -hmm. Which of the following is the best is the benefit of Azure Stack Hub? Um, so A, no need for infrastructure updates. B, a highly highly customizable infrastructure. And C, support for the Azure Resource Manager deployment model. Now, Lisa, like for I, I think we managed, we talked about the Azure Resource Manager uh, a little bit. But maybe you can also shed some lights why this is actually a great a great tool. Why you would use that, and why why would what, what can it actually do? Like, yeah. So the um, Azure Resource Manager or ARM, as it's known, I think it's been referred to quite often as the secret sauce of Azure, hasn't it? Um, and it actually goes back to what you just mentioned. So. On the previous question, you know, you said sometimes if, if something isn't listed as available on Azure Stack Hub, does that mean that you can't use it? Um, and again, it depends on how you're using Azure Stack Hub. So if you're using it as a completely disconnected scenario from Azure, mm -hmm. but if you're using it as part of a hybrid scenario, like Thomas said, you could build hybrid applications, right? And the key to being able to build hybrid applications um, and having them consistently run ac across Hub and in Azure is Azure Resource Manager, right? Um, and it's I've seen um, re some really cool stories from um, software vendors, so ISVs who have built applications in Azure use Azure Resource Manager to build those. Um, and then, you know, they've got customers who want to consume their applications, but they're not near an Azure data center or region, or again, they have data uh, regulatory and privacy issues. And what they can basically do is because they've used Azure and they've used ARM to create this application and, and, and architect it in that way, um, they can pretty much take that and run it on Azure Stack Hub, which is just very cool. Um, so I would say that C is looking good for me and definitely lean in towards C on the votes coming through that I can see. Yeah. Um, so this is this is absolutely, I quickly also, like I like the magic behind Azure and I like, so Azure Resource Manager really is the magic because if you're interacting with Azure, even through the portal or CLI or PowerShell or APIs, you're actually interacting with the resource manager and actually that's responsible for doing all the subscription management for all the uh, resource grouping tagging role-based access control and so on and also deployments so for example as as, as mentioned uh for example like uh, infrastructure as code deployments as well but everything actually which which is deployed uh, can go through that and though that's super handy if you want to have these consistent deployments now one thing i really want to highlight again i mean there's definitely uh, need for infrastructure updates, right? There is definitely uh, you need to update your infrastructure. However, we make it easy by packaging these updates. Yep. So I don't think it's A because everything needs to be updated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. B, uh, it's highly customized, and I think that is also important. It's an integrated system, so it's definitely yep. not something you want to go out and customize or can yep. customize. Uh, we have again with Azure Stack HCI and all the solution there. So I agree with you. I think I would also lean towards C. Yep. And guess what? It's the it's definitely the right answer. Excellent. Perfect. So let's switch Excellent. back to the learn module and let's go on uh, to the next section. That is Azure Stack HCI, and I'm super excited uh, about this one. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so by the way, Lisa, what does uh, the HCI stand for in Azure Stack HCI? <gasps> Um, it stands for hyper-converged infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. So for everyone who doesn't like it, uh, it's like when you heard the term the first time, if you come from classic um, uh, virtualization uh, scenarios where you probably had a SAN storage, right? And you had your um, compute nodes and all that, you you probably haven't necessarily heard about HCI, but like hyper-converged infrastructure really brings like storage compute and networking all together in like in in, in this solution uh, as you well. know the other day i learned so i thought so if you go from sort of the the three separate compute storage networking 
and then you move to converged infrastructure. I always thought in my head that that was the compute and storage converged, but actually it was the compute and networking mm. that was converged. And then hybrid com uh, hyper converged infrastructure is is all three. And I only learned that the other day. I was one of my colleagues is very kindly taking me through um yeah the sort of history of of hardware and, and infrastructure. Um, you can see that I, I need to get out more. Um, <laughs> I've been enjoying that, but I learned that the other day. So yeah, it's the it's bringing um, compute storage and networking all together um, and converging that into one infrastructure, which has lots of benefits. It's not always the right thing to do, depending again on your workloads and your use cases. Um, but if you're trying to if your workloads are, are okay to run on a hyper converged infrastructure and you're wanting to reduce your footprint, reduce your attack vector, for instance, um, HCI can be the way to go. Okay, so that, that's awesome. Thank you for, for that. I mean, it's always good to have someone from a OEM and hardware vendor uh, helping us with, with these kinds of things. So if you look what Azure Stack HCI is, uh, what would you, how would you explain it? Yes, okay, so, Azure Stack HCI is a new purpose-built operating system for hyperconverged infrastructure. And it's delivered as an Azure service, which is pretty cool in itself, because with that comes a whole bunch of benefits, right? Um, for instance, you can wave goodbye to being out of date because as it's a cloud service, as you would imagine and expect from a cloud service, it's it's always up to date. Um, so you can wave goodbye to having to run out of support of your operating system and having to upgrade it. Doesn't mean there aren't updates. <laughs> everything needs an everything still needs an update. But that's what Azure Stack HCI. It's a new purpose built operating system for hyper converged infrastructure, like a stripped down version of Windows Server, really. Um, and then again, it runs on. Windows certified or validated hardware from an OEM. And there are two two routes um, that OEMs could go down with Azure Stack HCI, and that was to provide a validated node and or an integrated system. Um, so at Dell, we went with an integrated system um, because that means that we can provide full solution level support, we can apply our you know lifecycle management guidance, etc. And I think the integrated system really allows customers to focus on actually the Azure innovation on-prem, you know, and less on keeping the hardware kind of up, up to date and they can focus on all the exciting stuff, shall we say. Um, but that's what Azure Stack HCI is. Of course, it has Azure Arc integration, and I'm sure we'll come on to a bit more about that um, as we go through. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I will even, we will even show you a little bit of like how that actually looks like in a, in a very quick demo as well. But I also interesting find it like interesting. Okay, there is, as you mentioned, there's validated as uh, servers, and it can do like different than from Azure Stack Hub. It can already start at very small two node yeah. clusters, right? Up to like sixteen nodes. So that is, that is pretty cool. So even if I have a very small branch office, I can take some. I also saw some vendors like like Dell and other uh, OEMs having these very small solutions like bundled yeah. up, uh, which work really great. Uh, we also see rocketized solutions out there for people in the field uh, as well. So there's some pretty cool stuff going on. And I think a very important part is, as you highlighted, it's delivered as an Azure service. And that obviously has some benefits. And it's tightly integrated to Azure as well. So if we, if we go down a little bit, we have here a graphic which shows a little bit how that actually looks like, right? And I think that is kind of like what you also explained uh, very, very well um here that on the bottom you can see we have the validated hardware by the way so the question now probably comes up um like what is the validated hardware how do i find out how do i get this hardware right and mm -hmm. i have existing hardware maybe so how do i can i leverage that as well yeah. and so we have the azure stack hci catalog um, where you can find the different hardware solutions from uh, oems uh, and the hardware vendors uh, and our partners uh, there and then we have right now I think over 400 solutions out there, like 400, right? So it's not a very very specialized thing. So the chances are high that your standard servers are actually in that catalog. So it could be that if you already own servers, that they could probably already work with this. Um, but then obviously you can also go out and check out this catalog to buy new hardware. And the great thing also, by the way, the next thing is even if you try this out. If you then want to win, install Windows Server on it, 
later on, if you like tried it out and you think, well, it's not the right approach, um, uh, you can still go out and use it for something different, right? It's not like a, a closed system in that sense. And then as Lisa said, f -Stack HCI really is the operating system powering um, this, this hyper-converged infrastructure with technologies like Hyper-V, Storage Spaces Direct, and software-defined networking. And we take, obviously, the things we have from Azure, all our learnings from Azure software, from the Azure hypervisor, and we're putting that in and taking that in the Azure Stack HCI OS. Now, there's a little bit of a difference there, obviously, because in Azure, we exactly know how the hardware exactly looks like, and we only support a certain type, and we have like, really purpose-built systems there. But obviously, in the Azure Stack HCI side, with these 400 solutions, we need to open it up a little bit. We just need to change the management a little bit, so we give you a little bit more uh, on that sense. And then on top of this, and that that becomes really like the interesting part. You can obviously run high, uh, virtualization workloads, Windows and Linux VM, super high performance if you need to. Uh, but then you can also run, for example, the Azure Kubernetes service on top of it. You can see that. So you can obviously create a Kubernetes cluster uh, like of any vendor. You can have OpenShift and, and others as well. And actually run that, like because you can create VMs, you can also install things like that. But we even provide you with the Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI. So you get a service which you can run uh, a Kubernetes cluster as a service, if you will, in your own data center to de deploy, first of all, your containerized workloads, which you created by yourself. But then also, and then we'll, we'll talk about that later in the other modules, about arc enabled services. So these, these services from Azure, which we talked about, which can come into your data center, what they need is a Kubernetes cluster. And we support different ones, but if you want to have a full stack Microsoft solution, you can go with Azure Stack HCI and AKS, like the Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI, and then deploy Azure arc enabled services on top of it. From the management side, I think oh, this I... is the, sorry, Tom. I think this is the coolest part, right? Azure Stack HCI, and the fact that you can have your traditional virtual machines um, running alongside um, Azure PaaS services, right? And I love the fact that the AKS, uh, Azure Kubernetes service, is um, you can only get it on Azure Stack HCI, right? Um, and I just think that that's, I think that this is very, very cool. So it's a, uh, it's more customizable, like Tom said, than than Hub. Uh, therefore, it, it can start smaller than Hub, so it starts at two rather than four, um, and therefore addresses a bit of a, a wider, and we'll come on to this, a wider range of, of use cases. But I think this is just Azure Stack HCI really is the perfect blend of hybrid, um, really taking care of those on-prem workloads, but allowing you to enhance them and um, you know make them better with Azure capability, but then also allowing you that deep integration into Azure and the ability to run Azure services. And I'll let Tom carry on because he's going to talk now about the, the management options, which again, builds on that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. No, again, I, I agree with you completely on this. So, um, yeah, we talk about management, and I also want to take time to answer a couple of questions in the chat, which are super interesting. Thank you. Keep them coming. We will. Uh, I will go through them really quickly in just a bit. Uh, so, obviously, if you have a solution uh, on-prem uh, in that hybrid mode, you can use Windows Admin Center to manage that like, and do all of your of your management tasks and do to set it up and, and all that. However, you can also take advantage of Azure. As we said, it's an Azure connected service, so you can also manage certain things through Azure uh, as well. And I will go, I will going to show you that in just a bit, just so you get a little bit of a, a, a look and feel. So let's have a look at the chat here. Um, yep. One of the questions is, so, and that I find very interesting, is there any lab or development kit for Azure Stack HCI available? Now, if you're familiar with Azure Stack Hub, you probably know that there is a developer kit for Azure Stack Hub which you can download, install one note uh, to try these out. Uh, on the Azure Stack HCI side, uh, you can download the Azure Stack HCI uh, operating system and use that. And there's an evaluation period. I think it's 30 to 60 days. Uh, Lisa, you correct me. Um, which you can actually use it for free. And you can install it and you can manage it um, uh, through that and try it out. So there's no special like version as soon as soon as long as you don't activate it. In that sense, you can start using it and try it out, uh, the full OS, and, and actually install it. Uh, in fact, I downloaded it. I had like two old servers, which I can basically install it on and then try it out and clustering it and, and try it out how it works. Um, I also got an interesting question. So, uh, Just on the labs front, um, 
really useful resource um, that my teammate Yaramir Casper has um, created is um, he's created some uh, labs for Azure Stack HCI. So for testing out some um, various scenarios, so helping you with deploying Azure Stack HCI, testing some of the functionality, etc. cetera. Um, so I've just popped the link in there that uh, Laurent is going to share. Um, and there's an uh, MS Labs, you'll find it on GitHub. Um, but then also my team has gone ahead and added some of the Dell functionality into some labs. And so I'll pop the link in for that as well, just if you wanted to test some um, uh, additional labs that the team has gone ahead and created. But I would say that um, the MS Lab on GitHub resource is, is great that Yarmir has, has created. So I just wanted to give a shout out to him there. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, then the other question I have here, and that's a very good one is, so what are the limits for Azure Stack HCI when you are disconnected, mm -hmm. right? So there, there is definitely, so Azure Stack HCI, you can run it um, uh, in, in a way disconnected. However, you need to like every 30 days, you basically need to connect to like, um, uh, basically send out billing information because it's again built through Azure, as I mentioned, it's like an Azure service. So we need to know what, how much you consume. Um, so it needs to connect every 30 days. Uh, and yes, so if you're using like, so if that's okay for you, that that's great. So uh, we have a lot of customers using it that way. Uh, the limitations basically is if you don't, um, if you don't connect after a while, we will not shut down anything. Uh, but we will like prevent you from creating new uh, services on top of it if you are uh, not connected, right? Uh, and, if you don't do that in 30 days, right? But if you connect like every 30 days once, uh, and it's again very small data which goes out there, uh, you basically can use it even I would say in a semi disconnected environment. Um, but again, it's not designed to be like in an air gapped environment uh, as yeah. of today. So that that's for sure. But uh, I get this question a lot: is like, okay, what if our internet connected is just not reliable? That's fine. I mean, if you if you can fix the internet somewhere in like 30 days, um, then you're absolutely fine. And again, we will not shut down uh, your services if they're running. And just to uh, build on the the consumption piece, so we've said that it's delivered as an Azure service. We are we've said that you need to connect once 30 days to send back billing information. How is it built? It's built per core, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's built, built per physical core. Yeah. Uh, of your machines and then that that basically of your physical obviously with physical cores with your physical machines um <laughs> but that is what you pay for uh, uh how billing is done and again you have a evaluation period uh, i think it's 30 or 60 days we need to check on that uh and and so you can actually use it without having any charge on it so if you just want to try it out it's super easy uh, uh to do so so yeah. Before we actually go into, and there's a lot more in the learn module, especially the, I want to go to the use cases. But before I actually do that, I want to quickly show you how this actually looks like if you look at Windows Admin Center, for example. So here I am in a demo environment I created, and this is Windows Admin Center. This is basically running in a web browser. I installed that on a management machine. Uh, and you can see here, this is my overview page about my Azure Stack HCI cluster. So you can see here that what it's doing, that everything is green, luckily, uh, that I have, like how much storage did I use uh, of that, of that volume, what is going on? So you can see this is a pretty fresh one um, of that. Uh, we also have on the left side here is the menu. So let me quickly look at this. So you have, for example, here, the possibility to manage um, virtual machines, uh, your physical servers. So if I click on this, you can see here, I get a little bit of a, of a nice overview of what's happening on that machine. I can also get the inventory. So you can see here, uh, these are my Azure Stack nodes. And then you can obviously manage all the rest of the hardware, like volumes, drives, and, and so on. You even have storage replicas, or you can even have stretched clusters from two locations uh, as well uh, with, with Azure Stack HCI. We have the software-defined networking built in and other uh, networking stuff. Uh, updating and even you can connect Azure Monitor and I will show you that in just a bit um, where you can actually go out and like have like the monitoring piece in Azure for this right you still here have of course the diagnostic logs and so on performance monitor where you can go out and check the performance of your system uh, and I also want to quickly highlight this this one is really cool so if you have if you want to run now your um, Kubernetes cluster you can really take advantage of AKS like the Azure Kubernetes service on Azure and 
Windows Admin Center will help you to set this up basically as a wizard when you go actually through and you deploy it uh, on that. So you have your, uh, your you can really quickly set up your uh, Kubernetes cluster. Now, let's see what we can actually do when we, uh, we said it's an Azure service. So if we go to Azure and we go to our ARC page here, uh, we can actually see um, here what we can do, manage with ARC. And again, we will speak about that in other modules. But if I go down here to Azure Stack HCI, you can see here my Azure Stack HCI clusters showing up. So I have one cluster here and one, this is the cluster I showed you, it shows connected. So if I click on this, you can see here, it now looks like an Azure resource, right? It's part of a resource group, it's part of a subscription. Um, you can also see what I'm running here. So you have uh, different operating system builds. On the bottom, you can see uh, the nodes, you have the monitoring piece here. So you can see here that everything is healthy. Uh, and so on. So I can, like, even if that, if I don't have a direct connection to that Azure Stack HCI cluster, if that, for example, would be like at another data center where I don't have network access with a VPN or anything, I could now go to Azure and actually have a look at that system. Uh, and then I can also like enable log analytics and much, much more. I can take advantage of role-based access control. And as Lisa mentioned, what we can do now here is also we can, this is a preview feature, which we just announced. We can now manage the virtual machines on top of Azure Stack HCI directly from the Azure portal. So you can go out and create VMs, you can manage them, you can create new virtual networks, um, you can manage the disks, the VM images. Again, this is all uh, in preview right now. Um, so this is done by the Azure Arc Resource Bridge, uh, super cool solution out there, which you can actually use uh, and, and, and manage. Also, on the configuration, I want to don't. Want, I also want to show that there is some stuff you can do. So first of all, the Windows Server subscription add-on, which basically allows you to get guest licenses for Windows Server uh, on your Azure HCI system, right? Before that, you would need to buy Windows Server licenses and license your physical environment. Uh, with that, you can get it from there. You also can uh, see here on the bottom uh, Azure Arc enabled benefits. So meaning. Uh, sorry, Azure benefits. Uh, so things like host destination. So you get, for example, that uh, if you move a VM, for example, to uh, Azure Stack HCI, it will be treated as an Azure VM. So for example, you get, a, you get advantage of extended security updates and so on. So if you want to learn more about that, um, you can turn this on here and you can learn more uh, directly uh, on our docs pages as well. So. That is pretty cool to me. Now think about it. Like if you have one cluster, well, you'd say probably Windows Admin Center is a great place to manage. But if you now have like, like let's say 50 clusters or even three clusters and they're all placed around the world and you're sitting in a coffee shop somewhere and you need to create a new VM, you basically just log in, securely log in to the Azure portal and you can go out and create your VMs on your Azure Stack HCI running in your own data center directly from the Azure portal. Uh, how cool is that? That is very cool. I think infrastructure operators will be now thinking, how can you sit in? I want to sit in a coffee shop and be able to manage all my clusters around the world. Um, that's super cool. And one thing that you mentioned that actually we we didn't uh, highlight at the beginning is the stretch clustering capability. So Azure Stack HCI was launched with the stretch clustering capability. Um, and that is uh, specific to, to Azure Stack HCI. Um, and another thing to to sort of keep in mind with this, we said it's delivered as a as a as an Azure service, as a cloud service, um, and so it will be updated uh, with new features uh, at a more frequent pace um, than maybe previously operating systems were. Right? Yeah, yeah. So by the way, I also want to quickly go to another question from the chat. Yeah. There are a ton of them, and I apologize if we cannot answer all of them. But one I see. Um, uh, can I extend storage by adding additional storage spaces, direct nodes? That's the technology behind Azure Stack HCI and uh, uh, Azure Stack Hub when it comes to storage um, by extending these. Um, and the answer is yes. So you can, what you can do is actually you can, like if you have a two node or three node cl cluster or an Azure Stack H mm -hmm. uh, Hub, for example, a four node cluster, you can add more nodes as soon as you more need more resources, right? If you need more, Compute resources, you can add it. If you need more storage resources, you can add it. Uh, in some cases, depending on your setup, you can just also, if you just need more storage, you can add more disks, depending on how your hardware setup is. 
um, and, and, and how the support is for that. But yes, you can absolutely extend this. It's absolutely not that you buy it once, one size, and then you're just stuck with that. You could really start small and then extend uh, if you need to. Just a, a quick one. When it comes to Azure Stack HCI, if you are going to need to expand in the future, start with three nodes. Um, don't start with two nodes <laughs> if you think you're going to be going to need to expand um, storage. That's an important one. Yep. Um, so what there also is, um, there's some common use cases, obviously. Now, this is interesting. Okay, what do we actually need hashtag HCI for? Now, we talked about how awesome, like, some of the features are. Again, we can run virtual machines on it. We can uh, run Kubernetes on it. We can run Azure Arc-enabled services on it. So here are some of them. So again, um, like one of them I like very much, and I see that a lot, is like branch office and Azure locations. Because we can start from a very small deployment, um, we can actually go out and deploy this uh, uh, in, in these locations, right? So you can have a very small two-node cluster if you just need some print server, some application server at the location. Again, I also spoke about retail stores and factories. You can do that. And the great thing is, is also like, Clusters usually they need a witness option, right? So they need to like decide if, especially if you have two, well, if there's a two node cluster um, or even like a, just an even a, a amount of nodes. Um, so one thing we added is also the, the possibility to have a cloud witness or a USB drive as a actual witness, right? Uh, so that is pretty cool. So we again to support these small deployments to make sure that this is. Now, Lisa, do you want to talk a little bit about VDI? Um, so VDI is is a is a pretty cool uh, use case, um, especially since you can now get uh, Azure Virtual Desktop on Azure Stack HCI, um, and we've actually seen a lot of this come up um, for for customers. So some customers who are actually using Azure Virtual Desktop, um, and maybe it's it's okay for you know um, some of their workers, but actually um, in some locations they need they need that to be running on prem, um, and they can do that now because you can now get Azure Virtual Desktop on Azure Stack HCI. And um, so I think the the two the two sort of PaaS services right now that are specific to Azure Stack HCI are the Azure Kubernetes Service and the Azure Virtual Desktop. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's definitely um, one that we are seeing more and more of. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. Again, uh, VDI is definitely a big one, especially because people really like uh, the Azure Virtual Desktop solution in Azure, but yeah. then they obviously have scenarios where, again, they need to have it on-prem, right, because of latency reasons or connectivity reasons. And with that, you can really have these pools um, of these VDI machines also running that. And the great thing, that obviously supports Windows 10 and Windows 11 uh, multi-session nodes uh, that is only supported in Azure or on Azure Stack HCI. So that is pretty cool. The other thing is obviously, as I mentioned, we, we spoke about small deployments, but we also have like, if you have these SQL servers, we have a couple of customers which really run really large, really um, big SQL server uh, environments, and they need to obviously have the optimum on performance. And Azure Stack HCI can really deliver uh, on that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have things like when it comes to security, um, with virtualization-based security, uh, which we can actually uh, put uh, machines in virtual secure mode, to actually protect uh, from attacks uh, in that space. So that, that is definitely interesting. And then if you go down more, obviously if you need some sort of disaster recovery for these environments where you actually have a stretched cluster deployment that Lisa mentioned that also before, uh, we will have that as well. Now, one thing I really wanna highlight, which I think is missing on this list, is mm -hmm. now if you wanna run Arc-enabled services on it. And again, if you're not familiar with Arc-enabled services, this is basically just the way you can run Azure services on premises, right? So that capability, what the, what you need there to run this is a Kubernetes cluster. So with Azure Stack HCI, AKS and Azure Stack HCI, you can now run, for example, Azure SQL Managed Instance, Azure Postgres, or Azure App Services, which are currently in preview, such as, for example, uh, web apps, logic apps, um, API management uh, functions, in your on-premises environment, which I think is pretty awesome uh, to do that because, again, there are needs for this, and you can now build these hybrid architectures. So if you have an application which wants to run on PaaS services, but the application needs to run in the cloud in Azure, but also on-prem, 
with Azure Arc enabled services, you can now build these architectures anyway and, and use that the same architecture in all the, the un, like not depending on the location where you're running. So that is pretty cool. Uh, I definitely we need to add this uh, to this list uh, as well. And I think you could bundle quite a lot of these into sort of a category that we're seeing and referring to do is just data center consolidation and modernization. So um, consolidating hardware down into that hyper conversion infrastructure for the workloads that need to continue to run there, modernizing it to modern infrastructure, but then also modernizing your applications that run on it, right? Like you say, taking advantage of Azure uh, data services on prem. Very cool. Right. Knowledge check, because I think we've we're we could speak all day, Tom. <laughs> Yes, well, we can. through Azure Stack HCI, uh, um, Azure Stack Edge, sorry, and to summary. There, so there is definitely so much to talk about uh, <laughs> about Azure Stack HCI and Arc and all that together. Yeah. So definitely join out our all next episodes. Uh, we will give you the link in just a bit at the end. But uh, in terms of time, let's go through the knowledge check, and then we also have a very very quick look at Azure Stack Edge. Um, so the, our fifth question today is: Which of the following workloads does Azure Stack HCI support? Um, a, Hyper-V VMs running Linux. Well, OK. B, Azure Key Vault. Or C, Azure Virtual Machine Scale Sets. So all interesting options in that sense. Um, I would say, I, I mean, I mentioned it a couple of times, um, what you can run. But interestingly, so C and B, those are more services um, which are running in Azure, which are, in that sense, more built into the Azure Hub environment, right? Um, especially the Key Vault piece. We had this question before. So if you want to run Azure Key Vault today on-prem, uh, we would need to have Azure Stack Hub. So let's vote. Let's see what the votes are. Um, the votes are coming in. And I see already that goes into the right direction. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, I know the answer. Do you, Lisa? Yeah. <laughs> I hope okay. I know the answer. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 I need to double check, but uh, no, of course. So for everyone, again, happy voting, just and uh, vote and go on. And But let's have a look at it. And obviously, it's answer A. So you can obviously run Linux VMs on top of Azure Stack uh, HCI, for sure. You can also run Windows VMs, obviously, as well. Yeah. So the next one is, which of the following technologies is mandatory in Azure Stack HCI? Now, yeah. we quickly went through this. I quickly talked about this one specifically. So is it A, the network controller, which does software-defined networking? Is it B, Azure's IoT hub, which frankly, I like this is like kind of like a trick answer maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then C, storage spaces direct. So I think I know which one it is. I think, um, so A, you're saying network controller for software defined networking. Let's touch on that for a second. I believe that there is an option to have software defined networking running in Azure Stack HCI, but it's not mandatory. So if you, this is taking me back to my exam days, you know, when you had to very specific, you had to read the question properly. Yeah. So software defined networking in, Azure Stack HCI is optional, which means the controller would be optional. So I'm going to eliminate A based on that. Um, Azure IoT Hub, I have in my head is it's more of a, a service. So not necessarily a technology, which would be mandatory. But I get your point on the trick question. The trick question. <laughs> so I think I think I think it's C. Yes, I think I think so too. Let's see if we are both correct. And also, the votes also say that very clearly for the people who voted. Um, yeah, people said storage based direct. And yes, that's absolutely that's the technology which builds this hyper converged infrastructure solution in terms of the storage side uh, yeah. and actually helps us like to replicate data between those nodes. So that that's fantastic. Good. Let's jump back to the module and the next up, and we go very very quickly to this one is yeah. Azure Stack Edge. So what is Azure Stack Edge? Um, and again, this is probably interesting, but uh, and it's a very, as we mentioned, there's a very specific use cases for Azure Stack Edge, right? Mm -hmm. And the way Azure Stack Edge is delivered, it's a first party appliance. You can actually go today to the Azure portal and order one of these and they will be shipped to you. Uh, again, depending where you are in the world, 
uh, and will directly ship to you and you can get this and it's a, like a, it's basically a, a one server unit uh, and it's designed to run machine learning and um, uh, artificial intelligence workloads at the edge so if you need you have some capabilities to run machine learning at the edge and so that is really where it comes in and we have a couple of uh, interesting customers there uh, which help us with this because it also has, for example, GPUs uh, and FPGAs integrated, which are field programmable gateway arrays, which really help with these machine learning workloads, right? That is not something you usually get in a normal server. Um, it's really something where what you get with, with these. And then again, if you don't need them anymore because it's delivered, you just send them back to us basically, or we're basically we pick them up or we let someone pick it up uh, and you just pay for a certain amount of time you're using it. So that is pretty cool. Uh, um, and you manage, you manage Azure Stack Edge from the Azure portal, right? Yes, that, that's a very good point. I'm happy you, you mentioned that. Um, yeah, so there's no necessary, like you have a local setup thing to actually like do the first time setup and connect it through your network. But then after that, you're actually going to manage that coal appliance through the Azure portal and you do all the settings uh, over there. So what are the use cases for this, as we already mentioned? Um, or what are the things here? So again, it's a really, it's a physical appliance, as we said, for really for machine learning and AI workloads. Uh, and you can run a couple of other things on top of it too, uh, if you need to. But again, we're while offering these GPUs and FG. PAs uh, uh, capabilities, that really makes it a good solution for that. And then, as you said, manage through the edge, re, uh, edge location. So that means it's not necessarily designed to be in a fully connect disconnected mode, right? It's okay. really for a connected mode. But why would you then use it? And I think the answer there is pretty simple. Because think about if you're in a factory and you run some machine learning over your factory floor to see if something is not right. If you do the machine learning stuff in Azure, so you need to send the picture data and everything to Azure, which takes the time depending on your internet connectivity, it will be calculated um, or, or, or uh, uh, computed in, in Azure. And then you get the information back and then it will take an action. So for example, if you want to stop something immediately, it goes to Azure and goes back. And that's obviously depending on what you're doing already too much time. So with running these edge appliances, you can actually do it directly where you need to, and it's super fast, uh, and you can take advantage of that, and you can detect, like, for example, what we have is, like, picture detection of certain factory floors or whatnot, and, and then deciding, like, with machine learning, hey, something is going to not the right direction, or there's now something different coming uh, in this factory than it was before, so we need to switch a couple of things, right? So that's pretty cool, but again, it's not designed to... Uh, be fully disconnected. So here we have an example also uh, of how that could be. Again, it's like on, on the left side, you see these on-premises uh, locations, for example, as I mentioned, factories and so on. And then you have Azure Stack Edge, and that can do all the local uh, compute uh, there and, and do get hardware oscillations using these GPUs and FPGAs. It also has some super fast local storage. And then to, to like do all this processing, but then obviously since it's connected, it can also take advantage and send these da this data to Azure for long term, right? Or do some additional stuff with it, which is not time critical uh, in that sense. So I think it's a pretty cool uh, solution. What do you think, Lisa? Yes, I agree. Pretty cool. Um, similar to Hub in that it's got very specific use cases, um, but different in that it is the only one that you buy directly from Microsoft. Um, and so, yeah, I, I agree. I think we need to jump to the the knowledge check now, and then move on to the yes. summarizing all of them and see if we can we can finish uh, on time. If not, we'll send you to the learn module, and you can tweet me and Tom afterwards and <laughs> let us know if you got the answers right. <laughs> absolutely. So, what other function does Vision Processing Unit provide in Azure Stack Edge? Is it um, a accelerated artificial intelligence interface <laughs> inter interreferencing? B, is it administrating and monitoring multiple Azure Stack Edge appliances? Is it C, graphical interface to an Azure Stack HCI appliance? So again, you can vote here. Uh, yeah. The question for me, uh, again, is, is, is very simple. I mentioned that, like the factory floor, right, uh, of the vision processing. And obviously, I mentioned the AI and the machine learning we can use at the, 
um, uh, at the edge. So in my case, in my opinion, it's definitely going to be A. Yes, yes, because so the let's... question specifically asks about the vision processing unit. So it's not B, um, and it's definitely not C. So yep, A. <laughs> and then last, the next one on Aztec Edge is which technology in Aztec Edge is used to implement the IoT Edge modules. So if you paid close attention, uh, you will probably get this right. So we have A, Service Fabric Microservices, B, Azure Container Instances, or C, a managed Kubernetes environment. Now, again, I did not mention that, but you have seen it on the graphic I showed you, uh, and it was also mentioned a couple of times in the Learn module. So um, what do you think, Lisa? Did you, you, did you pay attention to, my, to the graphics? <laughs> so I think that it's C, but I am not 100% sure. This is the one I was a bit like, oh, uh, yeah, but I, I, I think it's C. Yeah, it could be. It could be like it's a fair question. Their answers are also, in theory, all of these are possible. I would say, but it yeah. definitely is is C. Uh, it's the managed Kubernetes environment. So we went through this again. Let's go through the next uh, page here really quickly and do basically the the last pieces to actually compare these solutions and do a quick summary of what we learned today. Yeah. So again. I want to quickly highlight very high level that we obviously have different solutions on Aztec Hub, Aztec HCI, and Aztec Edge, and they're really purpose built depending on different use cases. And you have heard these different use cases today. Uh, we went through this. So really, it's a portfolio of products here which you can leverage. Yeah. And so, we've mentioned some of the similarities and some of the differences that we've gone through. So think about the number of nodes that we've talked about that you can start with, with for each of them. Um, think about the think about the use cases. Um, yeah. The integrated system approach versus like having the flexibility to customize it and have different solutions with Aztec HCI. Yeah. Um, so that that's definitely interesting. And also you can see here on the hardware side, that's also interesting. Aztec Hub and Aztec HCI is really like the hardware by the OEM. When you order an Aztec HC, uh, Edge, it's really delivered by Microsoft. And you can also see Aztec Edge right now supports one node. Uh, that's also why at the beginning, some of the questions were, do you have high availability and stuff like that in all of these products? With Aztec Edge, you have like well, I want node deployment. Yeah. And then again, there's a huge list of stuff we could go through and you can also see like GPU support. And we had a question earlier about GPU support from someone which we did not have time to answer, but I knew it would come up here. So yes, all of the products support GPUs. Uh, so if, you, if you're gonna get like hardware, make sure if you need this, check with your hardware vendor, your OEM uh, to actually make sure that if you need it, that you get the right uh, support there uh, for your hardware. Check um, five up from GPU support, Tom, just to help people out on the final question. Sorry? So one thing we didn't talk about, so just under local Azure resource manager control plane, it also mentions multi-tenancy support. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that we didn't mention in Hub. Yes, so, yes, so ab yeah. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, you're very conscious of our audience. So let's go back um, to the I actual... want to set everyone up for success. <laughs> no, that, that's that's awesome. No, really. I, I Sometimes I'm a little bit um, too fast on certain things and you have to be <laughs> absolutely there to do to help our audience here. Um, okay, so last question. And we're going to wrap up quickly. <laughs> let's go with what is the minimum number of nodes in the Azure Stack HCI? Is it two nodes? Is it one node or is it four nodes? And again, we had different solutions with Azure Stack Hub uh, as well. And we talked about different numbers of nodes. So I hope you paid attention when it came to Azure Stack HCI. So I will give some time uh, to vote for everyone. Um, again, this is the last question we do today. If you want to do the other questions, you can do them by yourself directly on the Learn module. And you can see, go through these uh, in just a bit. So, so we see some gonna, votes coming in. Yep. And it, everyone leaning towards A, too. That yep. is correct. Awesome. Thank you. So let's quickly go back to the uh, page here. 
uh, and actually have the summary. Again, you get that, you can go through, but you can also, why I wanna show this, you get some follow-up links uh, here as well. So you can actually uh, go, oops, can go out uh, and do these things um, as well. So be, be conscious that you go through the learn module. Again, you will learn a lot uh, as usual. And then I wanna wrap it up here. I wanna show you a couple of things in the summary. Uh, we can have a quick look. So Lisa, what did we learn today? Um, so I would say that we definitely um, are now all able to describe the Azure Stack portfolio and the use cases of each of the products. And we definitely are able to spot the differences and the similarities between each of the three products in the portfolio. No, that's awesome. Again, thank you very much, Lisa, by the way, for joining today. Uh, I also want to quickly highlight the Azure Arc Jumpstart project. Uh, super interesting. If you want to try out Azure Arc, we talked a little bit about that. Make sure you check this out. Uh, to learn more, you can also go out and check out this link. Again, there's a QR code uh, to discuss these topics of this module. So make sure you check this out. Uh, again, give you some time to actually um, copy that or take a print screen or take a photo of it uh, to make sure you can go out. Also, make sure to take that learn module. Uh, again, you can go out and take that by yourself and actually go through this and read through all of it we just talked about. And then last but not least, don't miss anything because we have multiple sessions coming up for the introduction to Azure Arc and others. So make sure you check this out. Uh, follow the uh, Learn Life Azure Hybrid Cloud Study Hall. Uh, we have, I think, over 14 sessions around Azure Hybrid. So it's absolutely going to be awesome. Make sure you join back. Uh, we will be definitely more of us, but also other speakers as well. So please make sure you join us with that. I want to say thank you for everyone joining and a special thanks to Lisa for being here today with me and helping me with understanding Azure Stack. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everyone.